1967, French theorist Roland Barthes famously proclaimed the death of the author and the birth of the reader, asserting that the reader is the focal point of the work, the point where the meaning becomes completed, where it all, in a way, starts to make sense. I suppose we can easily agree with this point. However, it might be worth noting that not all the authors are born equal. So, if not all the authors are born equal, can then all the authors die the same death? Do all the authors die in the same way as a Western canonical author, for example? How does the death of the author decenter those subjects that have never occupied the center? How do authors from the margin die? In my recent work, I grapple with these questions exploring the presence and absence of the author in the work, as well as the collective cultural imagination and desires and how they contribute to the construction of the author, to actually make a case for the author's resurrection. For the Belgian theorist Paul de Man, however, an author has no biography. Who is the author is not only an irrelevant question, but also an impossible one for the man at least. He writes, autobiography veils a defacement of the mind of which it itself is a cause. We can stretch this line of thought further to say that if the author cannot be known, then the author cannot be held accountable either. All we have is the work. There is no author, authorial personhood of any relevance beyond the work itself. Now, ironically, the man's own biography presents a challenge to his theories. Because when in 1987, the New York Times published an article entitled Yale Scholars Articles Found in a Nazi Paper, we could no longer read his theory of, this, of defacement in the same way as before. It turned out that between 1940 and 1942, Young de Man published about 170 articles in a Belgian collaborative, collaborationist rather, uh, newspaper uh, while the Belgian was occupied uh, by the Nazis. And, uh, and that some of these articles expressed open anti-Semitic and pro-Nazi views. Even though de Man took no part in the crimes of the World War II, aside of his collaborationist journalism, this discovery brought a different perspective not only to the respected Yale professor that he was before, but also on his concept of authorial disappearance into what he called the textual machine. With these revelations in mind, we can no longer engage with the work of the critic Paul de Man without considering his biography. His own life posits a dialectical and ethical challenge to the theory of authorial defacement that he has famously championed. My quest to reverse the question of another famous uh, French theorist, Michel Foucault, what is an author, that he asks in his eponymous essay, to who is the author, is not to put the authors on some kind of ethical, political, or aesthetic trial. This has been done throughout history in various modes and uh, for various reasons the authors, artists, thinkers have been put on different kinds of trials and sometimes to bitter and tragic ends. So I don't want to push in that direction at all. Neither uh, would I like to uh, tap into the cancel culture? I'm not asking for Paul de Man to be cancelled, uh, nor any other um, thinkers, writers, authors, artists, uh, makers who have behaved badly at some point in their life in one way or another. I'm interested rather in how this question who is the author leads to 
what is an author and back to who is an author to understand how the authorial figure is constructed through our cultural imagination and desires and what aesthetic, ethical, political and social forces are at work in this process. In other words, how the author's personhood or rather the authorial persona, the work itself and our cultural imagination constructs the author. This is also not to uh, not a quest for some kind of authentic personality, authentic personhood behind the veneer of the author or behind the work. Some kind of authentic personhood that, that uh, according to which uh, we will judge or we can judge whether the work is worthy of our attention, whether it's ethically, aesthetically, politically or morally right or wrong, but rather to, um, to understand uh, how the authorial biography becomes part of the context within which we read the work, we understand the work. So, in other words, uh, it is to claim that the author is born out of this relationship between the self, the recipient, the reader, the audience. This takes us back to Russian formalists, the group of scholars who in the 1920s and 30s coined the notion of biography as a literary fact. There were mainly scholars who work with literary texts, with prose and poetry, but I think we can easily extend this notion to the realm of other uh, modes of artistic expression uh, and call it biography as an artistic fact. Biography as an artistic fact is the working of the cultural imagination of the time, as well as the working of the persona of the artist and also the work itself. So why is it important to understand these dynamics of uh, both who and what of the author? By exploring and understanding um, how uh, these dynamics work, how an authorial figure becomes accepted, hailed, canonized, uh, included into the cultural narrative, is also to understand what is missing, is also to see where is the opposite of it, is also to trace who is excluded, is also to find the other author, be it the author of another gender, race, ethnicity or class. It's to understand how the barrier become erected, how the barriers become erected uh, and how these can be taken down. With the accountability of the author, individual and collective, comes the responsibility of the reader, beholder, or even participant in the work to ask who is this author? A brave, socially engaged artist who works against the grain, who challenges power structure, or rather an author who prefers the status quo and the perks that come with it. A bard with a room of his own, or a nobody writing at her kitchen table while cooking meals and attending to the children. And at times, and in contexts where authors have been silenced, censored, persecuted, and even made to disappear, it is crucial to ask where the author is. And I don't mean only where in the aesthetic structure. I don't only mean theoretically. It is the moral responsibility of the recipient to know the author. Even if the author is a construct, an already semi-fictional, theatricalized figure that is all one could ever know. <laughs>